let's start our seminar. Today we have Professor Matej Brishar from the University of Slovenia. He will speak on polynomials, images of polynomials, of non-commutative polynomials. Uh, you can start, Matej. Sorry for this. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me and, and can you can you see me? Yes. Uh, okay. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. So I I, I, will, I will start. So thank you very much for inviting me to speak at this seminar. I think uh, we are realizing that this uh, coronavirus crisis. Is has also positive aspects. So we are learning how to do things better than usual. So I think that this nice seminar is one of these examples how uh, things can be done in a very efficient way, better than we earlier. Okay, so I will speak about, as you can see the title, the images of non-commutative polynomials. Uh, this title perhaps doesn't says everything I will speak about, some specific problem concerning the images. Um, let me first start with basic definitions. I should warn you that the, the next two or three slides contain only very basic definitions. Uh, probably or this is um, unnecessary for this seminar, but I do not really know uh, who is the audience. Uh, so the first definition, what is a non-commutative polynomial? This is exactly what one would imagine that it should be, a polynomial in several variables uh, where, the, where these variables do not commute with each other. If one wants to define this formally, then one first has to introduce the free algebra, so non-commutative polynomials are its elements. And uh, special types of polynomials are the multilinear polynomials, important special types. Uh, these are polynomials in which uh, each variable appears in each monomial exactly once. So they look like this. Um, in the special case where this coefficient is the sign of the permutation sigma, then we get the uh, standard polynomial so that it is denoted by Sn, the simplest example, S2 is nothing but uh, the uh, commutator uh, x1, x2 minus x2, x1, uh, which I will write as x1 bracket x2. Now, the main topic of my talk will be the image of a polynomial on a given algebra. So, throughout A will be some algebra and then we take the evaluations of uh, our polynomial in this algebra, which simply means that we replace the uh, variables xi by some elements ai in the algebra. And this set is then called the image of f in this algebra. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Uh, it may happen that this image is trivial, so that it consists of zero only. In this case, uh, we say that f is a polynomial identity of a. For example, um, if a is a commutative algebra, then the, the commutator is a, a, a polynomial identity of a. Um, a much deeper result is the famous amitsur levitsky theorem, or null theorem, which says that uh, the standard identity of degree 2n standard polynomial of degree to n is a polynomial identity of n by n matrices. Any algebra that has a non-zero identity is called the PI algebra, so matrices are examples, but so are all finite dimensional algebras that can, as can be easily shown. Um, so the next example, the, some sort of the other extreme when the image is very big, so we in this trivial example, obviously, we get that the image is the whole algebra. And uh, some example in between, to, let's say so, if we take the commutator, then the image is, of course, the set of all commutators in the algebra, an old theorem. 
states that in the case of matrices, the image of this particular polynomial is the set of all trace zero matrices. It is obvious that every uh, uh, commutator has trace zero, but the, the, what this theorem uh, states that the converse is also true, so that every trace zero matrix is a commutator. And um, the next example, if um, also very standard one, so if we take the square of the commutator and we uh, look at its image on two by two matrices over a field, then this will be the set of all scalar matrices that can be easily checked. For example, it follows immediately from the Cayley Hamilton theorem. Um, so, this is an example of what we call a central polynomial. So, a central polynomial is a non commutative polynomial whose image lies in the center of the algebra, which I will always denote by Z of, of A, but is not an identity of the algebra. So th these were a few um, examples of um, images. Um, and now before I present the problem, which I would like to talk about, um, some observations and some motivation for this problem. First, two general observations. So what can be said about the image in general? Um, for simplicity, I will assume from now on that F is an infinite field, which may not be always needed, but uh, mostly needed, so, so that I don't need to complicate and uh, uh, always state this whenever it's needed. So the first observation where actually this uh, assumption is not needed is that the image is uh, closed under conjugation by invertible elements. This is a triviality, so as you can see here in the parentheses, just think that F is a monomial, and you will see that this is obviously true. Uh, the second observation is also a very uh, simple, maybe not as trivial as the previous one. It, it was noted by in a paper uh, by my colleague, um, Igor Klip, that the linear span of the image is a Lie ideal of the algebra. Uh, com commutation by any elements in the algebra. Um, for multilinear polynomials, this is more or less trivial, and but otherwise, in general, we just need to um, involve the uh, multilinearization process. Um, so it is easy to see that in the case of matrices, the only four Lie ideals are so the, uh, the trivial ones, scalar matrices, and traceless matrices. Um, now, in order to state the general theorem, which I intend to uh, to, to, to um, study, um, I will speak about three different motivations. The first one is an old conjecture, which is now in the literature usually called the Lvov Kaplansky conjecture, which states that if F is a multilinear polynomial, then its image on uh, the matrix algebra is a linear subspace. Um, I like this conjecture in particular because it sounds so ridiculous to prove that something is a vector space. So uh, I, I think we all think that our students should pass an, uh, sh cannot pass an exam without being able to show that something is a vector space. But now here we are professionals and we are dealing with such a uh, Oh, problem which seems to be so easy, but it is not so easy. Uh, well, the um, another interpretation of this problem is that, uh, in view of what I just mentioned, that uh, the linear span of the image is always a Lie ideal, and the, there are only four Lie ideals of the matrix algebra. So um, the, one has to show that the image. Of the of a multilinear polynomial is either trivial, 
um, the scalar matrices, the traceless matrices, or the whole algebra. So, what is it known about this con old conjecture? Um, it is true for two by two matrices, under the assumption that F is quadratically closed. This was proved uh, some years ago by Velo, Malo, and Rohn. Uh, and uh, for larger integers, this is basically still unsolved. Some partial solutions are known for, for some special polynomials. For example, one of these special polynomials is the commutator. This is exactly the result I mentioned by Albert and another mathematician, um, so that the uh, uh, <coughs> commutators, uh, so the uh, in, in the um, matrix algebra coincide with traceless matrices, which obviously form a vector space. Um, okay, so this is the, the first uh, motivation. The second motivation comes from operator algebras. In uh, operator theory, uh, there has been some sort of results that has been studied for a long time. You can see here this year. So this is, these are just some sample results, some more or less classical results and that's not all. So, um, this result show that every operator in B of H, B of H uh, is the algebra of all continuous linear operators on H, where H is an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. So that every operator is, for example, the sum of two commutators. This is the famous Halmos result. Uh, by the way, it is it, it is not necessarily a commutator. For example, it's easy to see that the identity can, is never a, a commutator, but uh, every operator is a sum of two commutators. It's also a sum of five idempotents, ten projections, five square zero elements, and there are many results of this kind, and all these results have usually uh, some successors, so for more general algebras, and also some predecessors, so that maybe the first versions of these results were not, um, so that, that this, uh, these numbers 2, 5, 10 were not uh, achieved. Uh, I, I think that maybe these numbers are the best possible. Anyway, so just to speak about the philosophy of these sort of problems, um, so the, of sort of results. So, um, elements in this special algebra, algebra of linear operators and Hilbert space, can be written as sums or sometimes linear, sometimes linear combinations of some fixed number of certain elements which are of special type, right? Commutators, idempotents, etc. And now the idea may be now to consider the elements of the uh, image of the uh, um, uh, polynomial as such special type elements. In fact, in Halmos theorem, this is exactly the case where we consider a commutator, which is uh, co commutators in B of H are just uh, um, elements from the image of the uh, polynomial commutator. Now, the third motivation is perhaps the closest one to what I intend to speak about. Uh, so, I will first mention the famous classical Waring problem, um, which was conjectured by Waring in the 18th century and uh, solved by Hilbert at the beginning of the 20th century. And this problem now, now theorem, of course, st uh, states that for each uh, natural number k, there is a certain natural number g of k, such that every number can be written as a sum of g of k, k powers. For example, Lagrange's four square theorem states that g of two is equal to four. And uh, we know by as Hilbert proved that uh, g of k always exists. Well, I will not exactly talk about some generalizations, maybe also well, about the classical worrying problem, uh, so, th there are many worrying type problems that occur at many places in mathematics. Um, and uh, 
the the one that I would like to point out here is the the one from the group theory. So if we take a word and then a group G, uh, then we consider the word map, which simply means that we replace this uh, excise by some elements in the group, and then this word map is defined in the obvious way. Then um, we consider the image of uh, this word map, which I which we denote by in the following way. And this image of the word map is a complete analogy with the image of a non commutative polynomial. Uh, and so the worrying problem for finite simple groups uh, was solved, um, as you can see here, by Lars and Shalev in TIP, um, something like 10 years ago. And it states the following if we take any word, then for any simple finite group, non-abelian of course, and big enough where big depends on uh, the word, we have that every element in this group can be written as the product of two elements from the image. Okay, so now that here is the general problem I would like to propose. Um, so th this, I call it here, the boring problem for algebras, and it says the following, take, uh, taking an algebra A and a polynomial F, um, let's try to write elements in A as, as sums, or sometimes maybe linear combinations will be necessary, of some fixed number of elements from the image. Um, now, I stated this problem in a rather rough way. So, um, two general remarks. Um, well, uh, here, in principle, A can be any algebra and F can be any non-commutative non polynomial, uh, but uh, it, it may not be possible to, to uh, achieve this because sometimes some polynomials must obviously be excluded. So, for example, polynomial identities, um, etc. Um, and this, the second remark is that uh, the special case where f is just this simple polynomial uh, x to the k, this problem was considered in by its many algebraists in different contexts for some commutative algebras, uh, also non-commutative for some matrices. Um, after all, the classical worrying problem in some way considers exactly this problem for the integers, positive integers, actually. Um, now, about the results. So, as you can see, the plan of my talk, I have just uh, uh, so I, 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 I uh, we went through the introduction. Now I will talk about results, and then not about the proofs, but some tools um, of, of the proof. Um, I'm speaking now about my recent paper. Um, so basically, I will just present results from this uh, paper. Um, so in this first slide, I will not exactly talk about uh, this boring problem, but um, something related, uh, in some sense, um, something uh, more general. Um, so just first notation by A bracket A, we denote the linear span of all commutators. And um, this first theorem, um, which I would like to present states the following. Um, if A is equal to A bracket A, meaning that every element in A uh, can be written as a sum of commutators, then the linear span of the image uh, of any non-commutative polynomial is also equal to A. So it means if this holds for the special case where F is the commutator, then it actually holds for any polynomial. So um, this result is perhaps looks a bit surprising, um, but uh, the proof 
um, is not so long um, after I've b one is aware of the result by Bellow, which states that for any PI algebra, A uh, is not equal to A bracket A. Uh, in fact, this theorem is a generalization of this Bellow's results, obviously, because uh, if F is a polynomial identity, then this definitely will not hold. Um, in fact, uh, in the archive version of this paper, uh, this theorem is not stated in that way because at that time I was not aware of the result by Bellow. Um, but now the, the, the version that will be published uh, contains this theorem. I have to change the archive version. Um, then the, the second theorem uh, considers uh, how can I okay the second theorem considers a more general situation where um, the, uh, we can so the problem is when does the linear span of the image contains all commutators and this is a sort of very general result the proof is not very difficult it uses the theory of Lie ideals basically. And, uh, well, you can see that for algebras which are equal to their commutator ideal, this condition that uh, this span contains all commutators is equivalent to the condition that F is neither an identity nor a central polynomial of any non-zero homomorphic image of the algebra. Okay, so now let's move to this boring type result. So the, this is somehow the, the, the main topic which I would like to consider. So I just mentioned th these two theorems uh, at the beginning, which because they are also, I think, maybe interesting, but now uh, he here are the main results. So I will uh, state two main theorems and then I will discuss their corollaries. Um, so now the first main theorem. This notation is quite obvious, it, it needs no comment. And now the theorem, it states the following. If F is any non-commutative polynomial, which is not an identity nor a central polynomial uh, of uh, the matrices and by n matrices, and if B is any unital algebra uh, with the property that every element in the algebra of n by n matrices over B is a sum of k commutators and the central elements. So if this is fulfilled, then basically the, the uh, boring problem I, I proposed can be solved. Then every commutator, no, not every element, but just every commutator, and this is absolutely necessary in general to um, uh, confine ourselves to commutators, is a sum of this uh, big number, four digit number of elements from f of a minus f of a. So, uh, a simplified version would be that it is a linear combination of a certain big number of elements from the image. So, this is basically the, the solution of the problem which I proposed except that this uh, number is definitely not the, the lowest possible. Um, so this assumption that every element is a sum of k, k here is a fixed number, commutators and the central element uh, is sort of naturally, for, just let's take a look at the simplest situation where b is simply equal to f. So this is the basic situation um, when we have matrices over the, the field. Then um, k is equal to 1, well, provided that the characteristic is 0, because then Every matrix can be written as a traceless matrix, matrix, so a commutator, and a scalar matrix. Um, so uh, let's now discuss some um, corollaries of this uh, first theorem. The first corollary considers the case where C is any commutative unital algebra, and the assumptions are just as above. Um, and then um, every commutator can be written as the sum of this uh, four-digit number of elements uh, of uh, f of a minus f of a. And this is simply because uh, if k, the number small k here, is equal to 2. This is not very hard to see, and it is 
well known. Um, the, the second corollary discusses the situation where we have uh, the algebra of um, linear endomorphisms, linear operators on, on an infinite dimensional vector space. And F can be any polynomial, non-constant polynomial, then um, every element is the sum of this number of uh, elements from this, uh, from this set. So I, I, will, I should mention perhaps in the previous corollary that the point here is that this number, I'm sure it's not the best possible, but it, it can be lowered, I don't know how, but it should be lowered. But that this number is independent of both n, so the size of matrices, and the polynomial. So um, th this is true for any polynomial. Well, of course, we have to exclude those polynomials that are identities uh, or central polynomials, which is absolutely uh, obvious that these polynomials have to be excluded. And um, the third color corollary is about Hilbert spaces, so a similar result. Maybe I will not comment on this uh, because I assume that maybe the, the audience here is more interested in um, algebraic, purely algebraic results. But uh, this was some sort of motivation for me, so that it was some, somehow it also ha has to be um, mentioned. Um, so co concerning this situation where we have um, these linear operators on an infinite dimension of vector space, I would like to make some small digression here. Uh, so I, uh, I, will, I will mention a result by my uh, student, Daniel Vitas. Uh, he's actually an undergraduate student. So the story is that I pro proposed him a problem because I thought that it will be um, a good problem for him, a good exercise to learn how to do research. And I was hoping that he will be able to get some partial solutions. But to my big surprise, he was actually able to, to prove the, this theorem completely. So um, now I think it's a decent, good research paper arose out of this. And um, this uh, um, theorem states that if, if we have a unital algebra with a surjective inner derivations. This means that there is an A su such that every element in our algebra can be written as A bracket some other elements. Then uh, F of A is equal to A for the image of A F is equal to A for any multilinear non-commutative polynomial. So multilinear. So this is some sort of version of uh, Volkan-Plansky conjecture for these uh, sort of algebras with surjective inner derivations. Uh, this may look as a very uh, special condition, but it is, it, may, it is fulfilled in some nice algebras. For example, in the algebra uh, which, uh, um, we, which served as the original motivation, so uh, endomorphisms of uh, infinite dimensional vector space. Veil algebras more or less obviously satisfy this. There are also some division algebras that satisfy this condition. So this class of algebras is not so special as it may seem at first glance. No, now I go back to, to these uh, uh, results and to boring type results. So the, the, the second main theorem I would like to discuss um, so th this, uh, may, well, let's go maybe back to this first theorem. So this first theorem discusses uh, sort of quite general algebras, matrices over any unital algebra Well, some conditions have to be fulfilled. But what can be said in the very basic case when we have matrices over the field, so the prototype of uh, non-commutative algebra. And um, the, the idea is maybe to lower these four-digit numbers, which are obviously too big to, to, um, find, to, to make them somehow um, more uh, natural. 
so um, again, we have to assume that F is a polynomial which is neither an identity nor a central polynomial. This is the natural, obvious assumption one has to make. And now we also are assuming that F is algebraically closed and of characteristic zero. So the field has to be nice. And then one can show that this set, f of a minus f of a, contains all square zero matrices. I do not know about other trace zero matrices what can be set. But at least we know that it contains all square zero matrices. Um, as a corollary in the situation as before, then we can say that every traceless matrix is a sum of four matrices from um, this set, f of a minus f of a. Uh, this is simply because every traceless matrix is, can be written as a sum of four square zero matrices. So th th this corollary follows immediately, if, of course, if you know this uh, result, which is non-trivial. Um, now, um, what about arbitrary matrices, not only traceless matrices. Every matrix is a linear combination of nine matrices from F of A. Um, unless F is of this special form, as you can see here, here F zero is an identity and um, the, the rest are some commutators because if F is of such a form, then it, in its image, only uh, trace zero matrices can obviously uh, appear. That's why we have to uh, get rid of these polynomials. Um, now, the obvious question that now arises is um, to replace these numbers that have appeared in the statements of these corollaries so, and also the first theorem. Uh, the, the, the first uh, three co corollaries uh, were about the, this, uh, involved these uh, fo big four digit numbers, which are obviously too big. And now, this uh, um, second two corollaries, uh, these two numbers, four and nine, uh, are much more reasonable, but I uh, don't think that they are the best possible. So. The, the optimal number should be found. And um, let me recall that in the group case, uh, by the results of Shalev and others, this uh, optimal number was basically equal to two. It's definitely not equal to one in this matrix case, but uh, I do not really know if it's equal to two or, or not. Um, I, I didn't find any counterexample that it would be two. Uh, I didn't want to write this in the paper because maybe someone will come up with a very simple example showing that two is not the best number, but uh, okay, who knows? It, it is, it's an open problem. Uh, now in this uh, final part of my talk, I would like to discuss some ingredients of proofs. Uh, so in short, this proof combine uh, the theory of polynomial identities the Lee theory of associative algebras and the results, one of them I already mentioned, of expressing commutators as sums of uh, elements that have square zero. Um, now, let me be more specific about now. The, the, the first I will talk about the applications of PI theory and the basic concept um, that um, occurs here is the following one. Um, Let's take an algebra A, and we will say that the, this not, that the not polynomials f1 to fs are A locally linearly dependent. If uh, uh, their evaluations at any elements are linearly dependent, of course, if they are linearly dependent in the usual sense, then they are automatically also locally linearly dependent for any algebra. Uh, but the converse is obviously not true. For example, a single polynomial is locally linearly dependent if and only if f is an identity of a. Uh, also, uh, the constant polynomial and f are 
a locally linear dependent. What does it mean? It means that F is a central polynomial or an identity. This is just an obvious consequence of this definition. And the following example is also um, important for what I intend to talk about by the Kelly Hamilton theorem. These polynomials, 1x to uh, x to the n, are locally linearly dependent in the matrix algebra, obviously. Um, so, the first theorem, uh, which is just a, a preliminary theorem, so for the main results I, I talked about before, but uh, perhaps these results that I will now present uh, are of some interest in their own right. Um, so, this first theorem states that if we have some locally linearly independent theorems uh, with regard to the matrix algebra, and then we multiply it by some H polynomial, which is not an identity, then this linear, local linear independence um, relation is preserved. Um, the proof uses standard tools of PI theory, Capelli polynomial, and this uh, classical result by Amitsur that the algebra of generic matrices is a domain. By the way, one possible interpretation of Amit's result is that uh, exactly this theorem is true where we just delete locally here, so that they are linearly independent in the classical uh, sense. So the uh, a corollary that is really needed for the main results here is the following one, that uh, if we take um, uh, so that if we take the, uh, the matrix algebra and the matrices, that then there exists uh, an, in, an integer k such that 1, f to f to the k are a locally linearly dependent, but without 1, they are independent. And in particular, it follows that f of a then contains an invertible matrix, which is very important, and it was actually been known before. I mean, it is very important for the proofs uh, of the main results. Um, how, why this corollary follows from the theorem? It's easy. So we just take the smallest k uh, such that uh, these uh, polynomials are uh, locally linearly dependent and it must exist because uh, of the Haley Hamilton theorem. And um, as, uh, then 1f to f to the k minus 1 are, uh, by assumption, linearly dependent, uh, in, linearly independent, and by the previous theorem, if we multiply it by f, then this uh, in, uh, relation is preserved. Um, so, one, the basic theorem which is needed then in the proofs of the uh, main results that, that follows from the previous theorem is the following one, that um, if we take again a, a polynomial which satisfies this natural assumption, then its image contains a matrix whose uh, algebraic multiplicity, multiplicity of any of its eigenvalues does not exceed half of the size of the matrices. So the proof involves the pre pre previous uh, corollary and um, an old result by Hurstein, so which basically states that uh, th the inner derivation on matrices is nil potent if and only if uh, it arises from a nilpotent matrix. So if we just uh, subtract a scalar matrix, then we get a nilpotency relation. Uh, so I, I knew this result for a long time, and um, it's uh, various generalizations, and somehow I was happy to find out that this old result can be applied to this uh, situation here. Um, now, the, this example shows that this theorem is, some, in some sense, the best possible. If we take a two central polynomial, this is a polynomial such that uh, its square is central, but f itself is not central. 
And it is a fact that such polynomials exist for some even uh, integers n. Definitely for uh, n equals 2, because then f is just the commutator. This is the classical example. But here now we are interested in, for, uh, in larger n's. Um, so then any matrix uh, in the image of f uh, obviously can, has at most two eigenvalues, and uh, their algebraic multiplicity is then exactly the half of n by, by the, the, the theorem. And it all basically what I want to stress here that this example shows that. Uh, we cannot say much more than what's written in this theorem concerning the alge algebraic multiplicity. At least, uh, I don't see what what more can be said. Um, okay, so um, now the the second um, sort of results, that uh, second sort of in ingredients that are uh, used in the proofs of the many results are. Uh, the following ones um, uh, concern the Lee theory, basically, Lee ideals and things like that. Um, I, I have just one slide here, so I will be very short. Um, so if we take any uh, polynomial f, then we define f hat as follows. And this basic lemma, which is used in most of the results uh, in the theorem. It's not some deep lemma, but it is important for, for this uh, paper. Um, states that uh, if uh, uh, the linear span of the image of uh, some algebra doesn't contain all commutators, then this polynomial f hat is an identity of a non-zero homomorphic image. Well, there's also this second assertion B. Well, you can see it. I don't think it's so. It, it matters so much um, to understand the meaning of the lemma right now. Just uh, I, I would like to mention that uh, this is obtained as an application of the theory of Lie ideals applied to the special Lie ideal, the, the linear span of the image. And now the third. Um, these preliminary results that are used in an essential way. Uh, they concern sets that are inv invariant under conjugation. So um, le let's take the following assumption. Let B be any unital algebra, uh, A uh, be the matrix algebra over B, and let T be any set that is uh, invariant under conjugation. We are actually interested only in the case where T is the image uh, of some non-commutative polynomial. But uh, concerning the dilemmas, which I will now uh, state, T can be just any set. Um, the first lemma is very easy. This is the statement that this is the whole proof. Um, but it, somehow it reveals sort of the main idea uh, uh, under which this, uh, the proofs of the results are based. So if we have a square zero element, so recall that square zero elements somehow play an important role here, um, then the uh, commutator of any elements from T by this element U lies in T minus T. So you can think of F of A minus F of A here. And th that's the proof, this is a triviality. Um, now, uh, the immediate consequence is that um, T bracket any commutator is a sum of 22 elements from T minus T. Why 22? Because every commutator in A is a sum of 22 square zero elements. We have proved this some years ago by my colleagues who you can see their names here, and um, somehow it has turned out that this uh, result can also be uh, applied here in this situation. Um, I think that probably 22 is not the best possible number. At that time, we were just happy to get some number, maybe with some 
more sophisticated method. We could lower it, but still, I don't think that we can lower it so substantially. And now, uh, almost the last lemma. Um, it states that if uh, the commutator of two elements from T is invertible, and we add the assumption which appears in the first main theorem, maybe you remember it, that uh, every element in A, we call that A is a matrix algebra over B, is a, a sum of K, K is a fixed number, commutators and some central element. Okay, then every commutator is a sum of these big number elements from T minus T. So you can see th that this is already very similar to the statement of this first main theorem. Um, and um, well, what is the proof? The proof is basically just this, this uh, identity, which is just the identity which in the free algebra, which hol always holds. And, uh, yeah. Then uh, we see that every commutator can be written somehow as some elements from T and commutators uh, and, and some other elements, but these other elements can be written as com sums of commutators and central elements by, by assumption. So th this lemma essentially follows immediately from the previous one. And now the, the last lemma uh, is states the following, that if... Uh, um, we have, th this lemma is connected with the second main theorem, which considers the matrices over an algebraically closed field. And uh, the assumption now is that T contains, T contains a matrix um, whose are such that the algebraic multiplicity of any of its eigenvalues is uh, smaller than half of the size of the matrices. So this is something that can be shown for the case where t is equal to f of a, then all square zero elements in a lies in t minus t, and the proof is just some standard linear algebra, not entirely trivial, but uh, quite elementary. So that, that, that's it. So uh, just the, the references. Uh, uh, so th this is the paper I was talking about. So just yesterday, uh, I got an information that is accepted for publication. Um, so then uh, th this paper by Rowan and others is maybe interesting because it, uh, uh, it is a long survey on the alvoca plasky conjecture and some other results uh, on, um, concerning the images of polynomials. So you can find it on archive. And that's it. So thank you very much. OK, let us thank Matej for listening to this talk. Questions? Uh, questions, comments? Can I ask one question? Yes, please. Yes, please, please. Okay. Um, um, the the uh, lecture, uh, lecture, you, I see that you consider only associative polynomials. There are some uh, studying in the area of non-associative polynomials. Yes, uh, you, you mean like Lee and Jordan or uh, some more general non-associative? More general, more general. Uh... Well, I mean, I didn't study this because uh, uh, maybe the as associative case is the basic case and uh, as you can see it is still somehow unsolved in the sense that uh, the results are still not optimal, and I'm not somehow I don't have a courage yet to to consider the non-associative polynomials. But of course, it, it is an interesting question. So maybe this is uh, you for, don't for know the some other researchers who research this situation of non-associative uh -huh. oh, okay. polynomials. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So okay. Yeah. Thank you to, to let me know. <laughs> No question. No, no. Okay, okay. Uh, it's late. Yes. 
Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I was not able to listen to your lecture. Maybe you answered all my questions. Uh, I was somehow yeah. engaged with yeah, some medical problems. Um, there is this yeah. old problem with which I'm pestering everybody. So uh, maybe you have some insights. So yeah. you have a polynomial free from free yeah. algebra. Yes. You're plugging in it n by n matrices. And what you're trying to do is to minimize the rank of the result. The, the, the rank? Okay, so uh, you're uh, taking, uh, so you're, yeah. say, say it's in two variables. That, that's the okay, point. yes. So you're plugging this n by n matrices, you want to minimize rank. So I suspect uh -huh. that rank should behave in some nice way. What I really need mm -hmm. for some applications. Uh -huh. If you take this rank as function of n and divide it by n, it goes to zero. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think it's even stronger that I think it, it sort of increases with some size and then it stabilizes. Uh -huh. But uh, I don't know. Did you ever think about something? No, like I don't know. I, I haven't no. So I, 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 I simply do not know what to comment. I have no idea immediately. I, I would have yeah. to think. So I, it, it's never been in my mind. So it's, it's a great question because, uh, say, um, uh, there is this famous question for free algebras. Yes. Which is not answered in finite characteristic case. That if you have uh -huh. a non trivial element in free associative uh -huh. algebra, then mm -hmm. the ideal doesn't contain one. Uh -huh. In zero characteristic case, it's known. But in finite yeah. characteristic case, it's open question. Uh -huh. If this question about rank will be answered characteristic free, there will be very simple proof of this fact. Okay. So that's okay. just <laughs> as motivation. I okay. spoke with, with Vinikov many years ago. He told me that, yes, it's possible to do it, and then he disappeared. And <laughs> Chad guys also told me something like this, but somehow, okay. <laughs> so, okay. can you send me some uh, maybe some, some papers? Oh, okay, to... yeah. Well, the, the, uh, uh, there is no paper devoted to this. I can just oh, or maybe just the problem. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Maybe please do because uh, for me right now it's impossible. Yeah. To, oh, okay. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah. 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 So it's uh, it's. Oh, it's I certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Are okay, you still you. In, in contact with uh, uh, Chebatai? Uh, sorry. Are you still in contact with Chebatai? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Uh, you, you mean with Misha Chebutar? Yeah, of course. Oh, yes, of course. Well, we are in contact, but uh, we haven't did work for a long time, and but we exchange emails and so on. Mm -hmm. And however, collaboration has. Uh, yeah. So direct collaboration has stopped, but indirect is still. <laughs> <very> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so nice talking to you, and I'm really sorry that yeah we had some these medical problems. Which it's I, yeah, very, it was very nice hearing you. Thank you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye. Any more questions, comments? More questions, comments? Well, uh, I have an impression many results they surely. What impressed me, they surely will be used. I mean, certainly will have many applications in different areas. I mean, not only in algebra. So the results is very, I should say, very looks that will be applied in different areas. So thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for this comment. Thank you. So if no questions, no comments, let us thanks again, uh, Professor Maham Brishar. Very, very interesting talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the name of the next speaker was already mentioned here by the next speaker will be exactly next Thursday. He will speak on polynomials of an index. So we are waiting for you the next Thursday. And now to everybody, thank you, 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 thank you,